Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, when we talk about heart disease and coronary artery disease in particular, you may have heard of a type of blockage or narrowing occurring at a bifurcation. So let's find out all about why bifurcation lesions or blockages are important and what they may be associated with. So coronary artery disease is the leading cause of cardiovascular disease and it involves cholesterol and plaque developing inside the wall of the artery over time causing narrowing but also sometimes causing disruption of the artery and the cholesterol plaque breaks off causing things like a heart attack. Our arteries are unique. We all have very unique and different patterns of arteries and you know there are three main arteries but you might have heard of a particular narrowing that develops at a branch point and that branch point is called a bifurcation. So let's talk about what bifurcation lesions are and why they are important. So bifurcations and as the name suggests a bifurcation is a branch and you might see you know, uh, the lake or river where you have multiple branches and paths of the uh, lake and the water flow. Well, equally, this type of geometry and pattern can happen with the coronary arteries. And our coronary arteries do themselves have branches. Although there are three main arteries that we talk about, the left anterior descending artery, the left circumflex artery, they're the two arteries on the left, but also the right coronary artery on the right. Well, each of these three individual arteries have multiple branches. And this very complex array of branches and arteries provide the nutrients and the oxygen and the blood to the heart muscle itself. So we can continue to feed the rest of our body with blood and nutrients. Now these arteries that branch may develop plaque and cholesterol at the level of the branch point. And when that occurs, we call that a bifurcation lesion. And now here are some examples, and we can see an example here of a branch point, and a narrowing has developed at the level of the branch point. Now, we don't know the full picture of why cholesterol and plaque builds up at branch points. Some of my research is actually aimed at further evaluating how blood flows in the arteries and how these branch points may affect blood flow. And we have seen with several of our models and patients who present with blockages involving these branch points that blood flow becomes quite turbulent at the level of the branch points. And that turbulence may also create this environment where plaque or cholesterol becomes more pronounced or can develop rather more quickly. So these bifurcation lesions are important because when we look at tackling a blockage and placing stents, well, this type of lesion that we place stents in is called a complex lesion. And the complexity lies in the fact that we're not only treating one particular segment of an artery, but we're also dealing with the branch of the artery. So there's a main vessel and a side branch. And both of these are very important because we don't want to compromise the flow in both of those branches when we're trying to put a stent. And you can imagine that when we place a stent to treat the blockage in the main artery, well, when we squeeze that plaque into the vessel wall, that plaque can then squeeze and go in to develop a blockage inside the side branch. And that may impair the blood flow into the side branch. So then the procedure becomes a little bit more complex and we have to use what we call two guide wires that we place in both the main artery and the side branch. And we often have to reconstruct the whole branch point to give 
an excellent result. That may be just placing a stent in the main branch and also a balloon in the side branch that opens up that artery. And if the blood flow is appropriate and it's flowing normally, then that's often sufficient. But sometimes when the branch is also a very large one, we need to put multiple stents. And we may need to start off with, say, a two stent strategy where we place a stent in the main artery, but also a stent in the side branch. Now, why is that important? Well, we know that treating bifurcation lesions does account for a slightly higher risk of complications compared to placing a stent in a straight segment of artery where there's no branch. And we know that there is a higher risk of complications developing with re-narrowing or re-stenosis, and that can occur at the level of that branch. And you can imagine there, when we put two stents in that branch point, there's quite a bit of metal in that branch. And if you don't get a very nice result and use balloons to, you know, to really reconstruct that and to get it as close as possible to normal blood flow and normal anatomy, well, that may long-term lead to complications. In patients who have stents in bifurcations and who might have multiple stents, then we may often also consider a longer duration of tablets to stop clots from building up. And the tablets that we use, you might have, not, you might have heard of called aspirin, clopidogrel, ticagrelor, but these clot-busting medicines that help prevent clots from building up are used perhaps for a longer period if we know that we've treated this branch point with multiple stents and we know that the risk long term may be slightly higher of developing complications. So addressing other risk factors like diabetes, blood cholesterol levels, stopping smoking are also critical in ensuring that we reduce the risks of complications developing inside these branch points. So some of my research, as I said, is geared towards learning a bit about how the arteries behave at those branch points. We're also then using the sophisticated cameras inside the arteries to get these scans and models and recreate very accurate models of these branch points. And that then allows us to better plan a procedure before we actually go and do the procedure on our patients. So we can model, we can try various different stents, various different stenting techniques in the bench model. And then that gives us very useful information about how the branch point will respond to having these stents and how we may be able to reduce long-term complications. So a rather complex lesion and also a complex topic, bifurcation lesions, one to be aware of and always discuss any concerns, any issues you may have with your cardiologist who will be able to provide you with the best outlook as to what is the optimal treatment if you do have one of these lesions or blockages. And I hope you found that useful. Until the next video, bye for now.